Welcome to Lecture 11 of Biology 116 entitled Plant Hormonal Control. In the previous couple of lectures, we've been looking at the way plants grow, the way plants establish themselves in terms of their diversity, and the basic overall structure of plants. But now what we really want to sort of delve into is the idea of plant control, how a plant controls the way that it grows, how a plant controls the way that it functions in its everyday sort of capabilities. And in order to understand, you understand that, you have to understand hormones. Now, before we begin, we'll start with a basic introductory flowchart and entitle it Introduction. So, plant hormones are a topic that many students haven't seen before, thus it's important to pay attention to the general characteristics that plant hormones have and then work a little bit deeper as we move forward through this lecture. So, just generally speaking, we'll mention a couple things about plant hormones that we're going to be elaborating on throughout this lecture. First and foremost, plant hormones are organic compounds. Okay? They are organic compounds. What does this mean? Simply speaking, they are made by the plant for the plant. They are made with life. They are organic compounds, and thus they are going to be chemical messengers. That's the basic job of a hormone, is to be a messenger. Specifically, we'll say chemical messengers. They're going to travel throughout the plant as a chemical, as an organic compound, therefore, and send a message somewhere. And that message will be important because that, method, that message usually is what controls plant hormones, therefore, control very specific, very, very specific physiological responses. Physiological responses. Now, that simply means that something, a process, has to happen within the plant. And that process, let's say it's growth. It's a very important part of every plant. That specific growth process is a physiological response that has to happen, and it's controlled by the chemical messenger known as a plant hormone that will allow the plant to grow. So it's a basic sort of, this is the message, you should do this as a response. So you get a message and you respond to it, and it's very specific, this message and the subsequent response. In addition, like I've mentioned already, plant hormones are a big part in the regulation of plant growth. So we'll write that down. They regulate plant growth. A great deal of plant growth is all devoted to hormonal control, and we'll see that as we move forward. Some general characteristics to understand about plant hormones are the following. And these will, we'll elaborate on these, of course, but for right now, just to sort of uh, give you a basic idea of plant hormones as in terms of what they are and how they work. General characteristics to understand would be that they are active, they are working in the plant, they are doing their role as a chemical messenger, controlling a specific response, um, usually at very low concentrations, actually. So very low, and I'm going to put brackets around this, meaning that this is a low concentration, meaning that you don't need a lot of this chemical, let's say, flowing throughout the plant. Maybe you just need one or two, let's say, molecules of it, and that's all that's necessary for the physiological response. So they're active at very low concentrations, and even though they're at low concentrations, they actually a lot of the times have multiple effects. Some people have this ideology or thinking that hormones have a specific, uh, you know, we said that they have a specific physiological response, but that specific physiological response can involve many different effects altogether. Growth does not just involve growth, it also involves, you know, going towards light and uh, obtaining the right photosynthetic balance between uh, the inputs and outputs, etc. Those are all multiple effects that are going to be activated by hormones, which are usually at low concentrations. And in addition, because of these multiple effects, we notice that hormones oftentimes, plant hormones, interact with each other greatly. So it's not just one hormone, one response. It's usually one hormone plus another hormone gives us many responses. That's the basic general idea. And of course, all of this is at very low concentrations. In addition, plant hormones can either be natural, they can be naturally occurring, or they can be synthetic. And we'll elaborate on this idea of natural versus synthetic as we move forward in this lecture. Now, the next basic sort of big theme of plant hormones to understand is the idea of tropisms. This is a big, big idea that's very important when studying plant hormones. Now, I always like to define a word, basically look at its etiology, the way that the word is rooted. Tropisms, this tropo root, actually comes from the Greek language and it means turning, okay? So tropos means turning. And the basic idea behind tropisms in plants is that this is what's going to direct directional plant growth. So it's a directional plant growth, I'll say, response. And you'll see what I mean by this response in just a second. Well, of course, it's a response because it's going to be controlled by a hormone that 
does specific physiological responses. So remember, tropos means turning. So what's going to happen is there's going to be uh, an environmental stimulus, so pr produced by an ENV for environmental stimulus. So there's going to be an environmental stimulus that says, hey, I need some, or the plant needs to directionally grow. What does that simply mean? Well, we have to understand the idea of direction. When this environmental stimulus comes, there's going to be a directional growth response. That response can either be positive, and that would mean that this response, this growing, would be toward the stimulus. So the plant grows toward the stimulus, or this response, this directional growth response, can be the opposite, which would, of course, be negative. And if we know that this would be growing toward the stimulus if we're in a positive directional plant growth response, the negative would be growing away from the stimulus. Grows away from the stimulus. And let's go back to the root word, tropos, right? Tropos means turning. Basically, you're either turning towards the stimulus or turning to away from the stimulus. And that's what's happening based off of this tropisms idea. We're going to see a lot more of this. Um, an example of this would be uh, phototropisms. So this is either going towards or away from the light. And most of the time, you're going to notice plants obviously want to go positively towards light. Photo meaning light, tropisms meaning growth response. So growing towards the light is a good example of this. Finally, in terms of the introduction, there are eight major classes of hormones, of plant hormones, that is. And they are summarized very nicely in table 39.1. Uh, and that's our basic introduction to plant hormones. Now we're going to get into the details of how they work and their specific physiological mechanisms.